So in this section, we will start from the Galileo force experiment. So when we have a pendulum, when we release it from one side, we will expect that it, the ball will swing to the other side, which will at the same level of height. Even if we put a pin at the middle, we will find that the object will also fly to the same level of height. So the particles tend to have the same horizontal level after it's released. Then, could you imagine, if we have a ball release, it will also go up with the same horizontal level. If we have a longer track, we will observe the same thing. Could you imagine, if the track level go up again, what will happen to the ball? It may move continuously without stop. So this is the fourth experiment. If the particle release at a smooth track, the ball will be moving without stop. This idea inspired Newton to create his first law of motion. According to Newton's first law of motion, every object remains at rest, or uniform motion, unless acted on by a net force or an unbalanced force. This is the Newton first law of motion. So let's see more clearly about the details of it. The first law is also called inertia. When a body is at rest, it tends to remain at rest. And when a body is moving, it tends to be moving in a uniform velocity. This tendency is called inertia. So the first law is also called the law of inertia in this case. Actually, inertia is measured in mass. So heavier the item, the inertia will be larger. So larger the mass, it will have a larger inertia in the case. Let's consider these two items, the light watermelon ball versus a real watermelon. So the light watermelon ball will have a small inertia, while the watermelon has large inertia. And if we give a push on it, can you imagine the watermelon ball will fly away? But if we hit at the watermelon, it will not move so much. To keep the body moving with a uniform motion, no net force is needed. Inertia is not a force. It's only a tendency to keep the motion. So there is another thought experiment here. According to Galileo, it is impossible to distinguish between the state of rest or uniform velocity. This is one of the consequences of the first law of motion. Can you imagine if you are staying inside a boat? Actually, we can't differentiate whether the boat is at rest or it is moving in a uniform velocity. It is also another Galileo force experiment. Then, what is the role of a force? When a force is applied in the same direction of the velocity, it will increase the speed of the body. While, if the force is opposed to the direction of the motion, then it will decrease the speed of the body. And if the force is perpendicular to its motion, it will change the direction of the motion. So when the force exists, okay, we will have the, the above changes. Let's see some data examples of a body remaining at rest due to inertia. The first example is if we place a cone on the paper. When the paper is suddenly removed, the cone does not move together with the paper, but it will fall into the cup. And in the second picture, can you imagine if the tablecloth is removed quickly, then the utensil will also remain at rest. Another example, let's consider this item. There are two strings, A and B. If we pull the string B gradually, what will happen? The string A will tend to break up first because the pulling force of the person will 
sum up with also the weights of the mass. So the string A will experience a larger force. So when applied the force is gradually increased, the upper string will break first since it experiences a greater force. However, it may not be the case for the second example. This time, we suddenly pull the string. So we have a sudden jerk on it. This time, the string B will break down first because the mass will tend to remain at rest. So when the applied force is given a sudden jerk, the upper lower string will break since the mass tends to remain at rest. This is another example related to the Newton first law. And that example is a sudden start of the bus. I think you all have this experience. If the bus sudden start, actually your body is tends to remain at the original position. So we will tend to fall to the backward. So when the bus is sudden start its motion, the passenger will strut backwards since he has the tendency to remain at rest and stay in the original position. And there are some more examples related to the body that keep on motion due to inertia. In the space, because there is no air resistance and no gravity, so the engine of a spacecraft is shut down in space. But the aircraft, the spacecraft will still keep on travel in a uniform velocity due to inertia. So even for the astronaut want to go to the moon, the engine did not need to keep moving. And the second example is the bowling ball. When the bowling ball left the player's hand, it will keep on moving. There is no engine is need to push the bowling ball on the track. And we throw the ball upwards like this. Even the ball is left the hand, but there is no force is needed to be applied by the hand, the ball will still fly up due to inertia. Another example is the braking of the vehicles. A vehicle cannot stop instantaneously. Due to inertia, it has to move over a certain distance before it stops. And so, for the emergency braking, the vehicles will have the skid marks left on the road. The other example is car accident. Can you imagine if the car travel in a very high speed? When the car hits something, actually the person will tend to fly away with the same speed. So when the vehicle suddenly stops, the passenger inside will be jerked forward due to inertia, and its speed should be the same as the car. And the other, so there are some safety measures to prevent the injury in the traffic accident. So can you imagine if the car hit another car in the front, the person will tend to move forward. So when it sudden stop, the passenger would continue their motion due to inertia and hit the front window to cause injury. So we have the design of safety belt in order to prevent the person move forward and leave the car. So seat belt can prevent the passenger from throwing away forward. So the traffic regulation also require the passenger to wear seat belt. In other case, sometimes we are hit by the other person from the back. So when we hit it, the car will move forward, but our body is tends to stay at the original position. So if a car is pumped at the back, the body of the passenger is pushed forward by the seat, and its head is tend to remain at rest due to inertia. So for the car, we will have a headrest in order to push our head. So that if there is a car accident, it can prevent our neck from injury. So this is the headrest. 
Besides, some also other regulations to reduce the risk of traffic accidents. For example, to keep distance, the driver should keep distance with the front vehicles. We have a two-second interval. Why do we divide the distance in time rather than explicitly talk about the how much length to consider? As you can imagine, if the car travel faster, the distance move in two seconds is much longer than the car moving slower. So that's why we use two second interval to define the appropriate distance between the front car and the original car. No speeding. Vehicles should not exceed the legal speed limit. I think this point is easy to understand. And then no overloading, so lorry should not carry goods that exceeds the loading limit. And for the private car, there is a lump of limit for passenger, in order to limit the inertia of a car. Another idea related to the motion is the Aristotle force wheel of motion. As we say force wheel, this is not true, but a common mistake. It states that a net force is required to keep the mo body in uniform motion. If we apply the force, will the motion be uniform velocity? The idea is wrong, because in his view, he neglected the external resultant force, and Aristotle does not realize there is a friction acting on the moving body, because. And apply the force is required to overcome the friction. However, the net force in that case is zero when the body is moving in a uniform velocity. Let's consider the figure. If we apply the force, actually there is a friction in the opposite, so that the apply the force and the friction is balanced, so that the net force in this case is zero. So this is called the Aristotle force wheel of motion. No force is needed to keep the body moving in a uniform velocity. And there are different types of opposing force. Firstly, it's called the solar friction. Solar friction is the friction that we always experience for the rough surface. So when something is moving on the rough surface, then The friction will appear. So when you see rough in the physics question, it is a hint to tell you friction exists. So sort of friction exists when a body moving over a rough surface. The other one is the air resistance. If you still remember the feather, when it's falling down, the air resistance will act on it, so that it will move. Slower, and please note that there is no air resistance when a body is at rest, and or it is stay in vacuum. In most of the case, air resistance are negligible in order to simplify a calculation. And the other resistance that's similar to air resistance is the liquid resistance. When the body is moving in liquid. For example, someone st swim in the water, and also note that no liquid resistance when the body is at rest, and the air re liquid resistance is also different from the buoyancy force. The next one is the braking force. When you drive a car, when the brake is applied, the braking force will exit on the car to decelerate it. Here are some examples or method that can reduce friction in the laboratory. For example, using rollers, we can use some marble or polystyrene threads in order to reduce the friction, or we can use lubricant. We can use some oil to reduce the friction. And the other product here is the air track. The air track actually is a pump. The pump will pump the air to the track. In order to provide a track, a air cushion, 
so that the item move on it will have low friction. Another simple design related to the air cushion, we can use the balloon, then connect it to the plug, so that the balloon will be ejecting air to provide the air cushion for the plug, like this. So it can move along on the table with a low friction. Here is an experiment related to the motion with or without friction. You can see that the air track, okay, is like the cushion ball that we can play with. So the glider will move along it on a very smooth path when the air track is on. So when the friction is negligible, the glider will remain in motion, and the moving object keep moving at a constant speed when friction acting on it is negligible. This match with the prediction of Newton's first law of motion, which is the law of inertia.